Hello and welcome back. My name is Sean, also known as Chili Chump. In today's episode, we're going to be making possibly the tastiest chili oil that you've ever had. And the best part is it's very easy to make and it'll be ready in no time at all. Now I'll get to the ingredients in just a bit, but when it comes to the oil that we use, that really is up to you. That's your preference. For me, I've tried many different ones, canola oil, vegetable oil, avocado oil, olive oil, but my favorite is sesame seed oil. It's a stronger tasting oil and it really does come down to personal preference. What I recommend is try this recipe with a few different types of oil. You'll find the one that works well for you and let me know in the comments below which one you found to be your favorite. Let's get to the ingredients and see what we're going to be adding to this oil to make it taste so delicious. First up is our sesame seed oil. Now the one problem that there is with using an oil like this is that it is quite a bit darker than your typical vegetable oil. That just means that it's not going to take on the colors of what you add to it. So if you're using a bright red chili, it's not going to end up being a bright red oil. Although this has a bit of a, a red tinge to it, more of a golden hue. But regardless, it's all about the taste for me. And this tastes fantastic. Most of the time when I'm making my chili oil, I'm using these guys. These are my peri peri chilies and if you watch my channel for any length of time you'll know that they are one of my favorites and we have some lovely dried chilies. Now let me just point out when you are doing this I would recommend going with dried chilies. I have tried this with fresh chilies. The only problem is it doesn't really come out the way that you expect. We actually are going to be making two batches today. Over here we have some of my habanero snow white so these are pretty hot about 300,000 scoville these are about uh, 50 to 150,000 scoville i'm going to be doing two 250 milliliter batches of this oil so the ingredients i'm going to show you are going to be enough for each of those two batches We're now going to place this inside a Ziploc bag, something that's food grade, which most Ziploc bags like this are going to be. We're going to get all of these ingredients inside here. The easiest way to do it, because I am outside and it's a little windy, is just to turn it over into there. The next ingredient I need to add, because this one is going to be for the peri peri oil is of course our peri peris. Probably use about 10. Um, there's about 10, maybe 15 peri peri. This is down to your preference. If you want it hotter, then add some more. Don't go overboard, but also don't just go and put one or two in there. It won't really work out very well. This is smelling amazing already. I'm just gonna close that up for now and we're gonna be doing the next batch. This one I'm gonna make quite a bit hotter so we're gonna actually add all of these just as a bit of an experiment. I don't normally make a super hot type of chili oil but hey, let's give it a go. <coughs> that goes up your nostrils. <clears throat> wow, you can smell that capsicum shenanigans. <laughs> Let's give that a light crush as well. <clears throat> there we go. The flavors or the smells are really, really coming through nicely here. So the one thing I didn't add to the last bag was the bay leaf. So I'm going to add one to this and we're going to add one to the other one as well.
The next stage of this is heating the oil so that it brings all the flavors out of the ingredients we've just added. To do that, there are a few different ways. You could do this on a stovetop. I've tried that before. It's a bit of a pain, especially for how long we need to do this. You want to run this overnight. The second way, which is a bit more successful, is using a slow cooker. You can set it on the low setting and that should keep the right temperature for you. Just check the settings on your own slow cooker. You want to be below 100 degrees Celsius. The way I've settled on doing it, which is the easiest way by far, is by using the sous vide method. Now, I have borrowed this from my brother and I'll be getting one for myself very soon, but man, this makes life so much easier. You basically set it and forget it. Regardless of which method you use, you need to get as much air out of here as possible because you don't want these bags floating on top of the water. We're gonna take one of the bags, we're gonna stick it in the water, open up just a corner of the bag so it lets the air out, and then just pull it under the water and you'll see that the air will start pushing out. Try not to get water inside the bag. So there we go, we've got most of it out there. And you can see there, that is looking good. So that's just gonna sit in the water, make sure it is properly sealed. I would recommend getting good quality Ziploc bags. The cheaper ones might not hold very well. But there we go, that there's just gonna stay in the water and we can do the same thing with the other batch. And there we go. You can see that's got most of the air out there. There's still a little bit in there, but not the end of the world. And that is that. Now you might be wondering why am I doing this in a cooler box? This just helps maintain the temperature a lot easier. Even if you have a decent sous vide stick like this, it will help keep the temperature in here so this doesn't have to work as hard. Also with the lid on top, that helps so that water doesn't evaporate too much. All that's left to do is get this started. To do that, we get the stick into this hole, get it secured onto the side here, and then get the temperature right. And the temperature we want to aim for is 85 degrees Celsius. Start, and this is now churning up the water. It'll get it up to that temperature and it will maintain that temperature for as long as we need it to. We're going to leave those to cook overnight and we'll be back with it tomorrow so we can give it a bit of a taste test. It's been about 16 hours since we started this, so it's time to check and see how our oil is doing. I did turn this off about an hour or so ago just so I can start cooling down, but I can actually feel this is still pretty hot. So be careful. Uh, don't burn yourself, please. Well, the bag stayed intact, so <laughs> that's good. Um, something I did want to point out, if you have a look on the box that your bags come in, it will tell you how hot those bags can be submerged in water, that sort of thing. So just check on that and make sure that it's going to be okay for what we're doing. 85 degrees Celsius, most quality bags will be able to handle that just fine. So let's take these out and give it a taste. Let's first process the peri-peri oil. So it's this one over here, and it's looking good. Looking forward to trying it. What we're gonna use is just these simple bottles, and I have these tops here, so it can decant the oil quite nicely. We're gonna take a funnel and a small tea sieve. Any sort of sieve will be fine. You just wanna get out the big particles. Smells amazing. Let's see what we have here. It is lovely. 
Now you could of course go a lot longer than this. Uh, you can cook this for a couple days and you'll get more of those flavors come through. But for what I'm doing with this, it's just perfect. Let's do the other one and then we'll give it a bit of a taste test. And there we have our two oils. They look very similar, so I need to be careful not to mix them up. And to give it a taste, normally you'd have this on things like pizza or pasta. It's really nice on pasta, actually. But today, I'm gonna have it on some bread. I haven't got any pizza at hand, unfortunately. So first we'll try our peri-peri oil, and we'll see how we did. still going to be quite warm, so it should be good. Mm. That is good. <laughs> so, mm. so difficult to describe the flavors here. The, uh, the spice actually kicks in a little bit later. So up front, you might think you're not really getting it, but then you can feel it come through. It's lovely, subtle spice coming through. Um, and it's just, just the way I like it. It is to complement food. It's not to be a hammer to hit you over the head <laughs> with flavors. But uh, wow, that is good. Let's give the other one a go and see what sort of spice we have there. Like I said, I like it to be a bit of a subtle amendment to what I'm eating. So having a, having this dribbled on some pizza is delicious. Uh, pasta, even bread like this, it's lovely instead of using butter. It's a bit of this lovely chili oil. But let's try the hotter one <laughs> and see how we did. I may even, if, uh, well, actually, I know I'm going to get in the comments that I should be trying it with hotter peppers like... Seven Pot Primos or Carolina Reapers, and I may give that a go, just, <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit later. I still have to uh, harvest a lot of my super hot, so maybe a bit later in the season. But let's try some of this Habanero Snow White, which I know is a hot pepper. So that's a decent amount on there. It's a very similar smell, a um, bit more pungent. I can smell the chilies coming through but uh, the rest of the flavors, obviously, the spices are the same, the, the different ingredients that we had besides the pepper. And um, another thing to note, with the flavors that are coming through, the sesame seed oil actually calms down a little bit in the flavor and smell, which is, is a nice thing. Uh, sesame seed oil can be rather pungent on its own, but when it's all mixed up like this, lovely. So let's try this one. Very different flavor up front. Definitely more heat. Um, it's a hot day today and eating spicy food on a hot day is uh, it's always a bit interesting. Um, definitely more heat. Actually, I, I don't mind it. Um, it is about double the heat of the peri-peri oil that I've made. Uh, still building a little bit, but that flavor is very different up front. The capsicum chinense is a very pungent pepper itself, a very strong tasting pepper. Most capsicum chinense are pretty strong tasting. Heat is still building. Again, the reason that you only feel the heat coming on a bit late, it's not up front, like at the beginning of that taste, is because we are mixing it with oils and capsaicin, the stuff that burns, mixes very well with oil. That's why you drink milk when you're uh, trying to calm the heat down. But that's not bad, it's not bad at all. It, it isn't a super hot, of course not. It's about 300, 350,000 Scoville. Scoville, <clears throat> battling to breathe a little bit. Um, but I could actually I, I could actually deal with that. that. That would be quite nice on a pizza. I'm gonna try a little bit more actually. Um, I do prefer the flavors that are coming through on the peri-peri. 
Uh, it just is such a nice mix, nice rounded mix. But uh, yeah, I think I, I might make this one again. With a hotter super, a super hot pepper later. That is delicious. Mm. <laughs> well, I do hope you give this a try. As you can see, it's really easy. Wow, that's burning. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, I do hope you give this a try fantastically easy it doesn't take too long I know the sous vide part of this might seem a bit, uh, bit much but if you do have a slow cooker you could do it well in there as well and uh, let me know in the comments below if you do give it a go let me know what peppers you tried it with and let me know what you think of the recipe thank you so much for watching I really enjoyed having you join me today and until the next video Stay safe and stay spicy.